In this video, I'll share what a portfolio is, how to make a portfolio website that'll help you stand out even if you don't have any direct experience, and I'll show you my portfolio website that helped me land my dream entry-level marketing role. Baby, but you know I'm about to keep you up. Welcome to my channel and today I'm about to teach you something. Okay, the truth is that in competitive career markets like business, technology, and marketing, the fastest way to get hired is through who you know or experience that proves you can do the job well, usually by having done the job already. For us newbies who are just starting off in our careers, it puts us at a disadvantage because we haven't had the time to build our professional networks yet, and we probably have very limited experience for the jobs we're going for. Sometimes it can feel like even if you went to a prestigious university, got really good grades and did a bunch of extracurriculars, you're still just a drop in a pool of resumes that all look the same. This is when a portfolio website can swoop in and be your secret weapon to getting your dream entry level position. In this video, I'll share what a portfolio is, how to make a portfolio website that'll help you stand out even if you don't have any direct experience, and I'll show you my portfolio website that helped me land my dream entry level marketing role. So if that's something you're interested in, keep watching this video. By the way, if you're new here, hey, I'm Camilla. I'm all about living life to the fullest, so that means I work really hard to create the life of my dreams and play hard so that I can enjoy it. So on this channel, you'll find videos on self-development, career, and personal finance, but also beauty, lifestyle, and travel. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you're probably as nuanced as me, so you might as well subscribe and we can be friends and create and live out our dream lives together. Okay, let's jump into what a portfolio is and how it can be your secret weapon on your job hunt. I do want to say that I work in marketing slash brand strategy and so some of what I say will be focused on that perspective. However, the tips about making a portfolio that I'm going to share in this video can be applied to a variety of professions. So a portfolio is basically just a collection of materials that showcase your past work that you can show to potential employers or clients. Depending on the industry, the types of materials that you're expected to have in your portfolio will vary drastically. Like if you're in advertising versus if you're trying to be an actor versus if you're going into web design. But generally what people expect to see in portfolios are case studies, sample work, testimonials, and past project proposals. However, for those of us with not that much experience in our fields yet, if we only stuck to that traditional material in our portfolios, it would look pretty barren. I know for myself personally, most of what I had to show in my portfolio was projects that I had from school. And so it was up to me to get creative with what I put in my portfolio and make it relate to the jobs that I was actually going for. I saw an opportunity to use portfolios to incorporate my hobbies and passion projects and show how they added to my professional value for the roles that I was going for. If you don't have a lot of experience in the field that you're going into yet, you can use other things that you do and use your portfolio to show the transferable skills that will directly apply to those roles and also use the medium through which you share the portfolio to showcase your skills in that field, whether it's creating a portfolio website and, and showing your web design or coding skills, or use your portfolio website as I did to market and brand yourself and show off those skills that would directly apply to your role. I guess back in the day, portfolios were usually just like actual physical copies and you would make multiple copies of your portfolio and send them to different jobs or bring them with you when you were going for an interview. And there's lots of different ways that you can house your portfolio digitally now. I opted to have a portfolio website and that was great because I could put it on my LinkedIn, I could put it on any other job sites like Handshake, and I could hyperlink my portfolio in specific descriptions on my resume to show the actual part of my portfolio that related to the work from my resume. Having your portfolio housed on a website also allows you to continually update your portfolio and how you brand yourself as your career progresses. So for example, last year when I was looking for internships, I branded myself as an intern, but as I move forward in my career, I'll be able to incorporate more and more experiences on there or use it for other things like my social media pursuits. 
Also, remember what I said before about just feeling like one extra drop in the pool of resumes on someone's desk? A portfolio website is a great way to have your own personality shine through. We all know by now that at big companies, our resumes are really just put through some electronic processing tool before it even goes to a person. And so we have to make our resumes really bland and in standard formats, but on your portfolio website, you can design it however you want and include different relaxed language or different styles that help your personality shine through. I know for me personally, every single one of my interviewers asked me about my portfolio website and was really happy that it was something I included. And they wanted to talk to me about specific things they saw on my portfolio website that not only impressed them based on my skills, but helped them connect to me on a human to human level. I've been talking about my portfolio website a lot, so let me just show you what I did. And please just take this as inspiration. I know that I looked at a lot of people's portfolios before making mine, and although I got inspiration from them, I didn't need to copy anyone. Because again, this is an opportunity to have your personality and your unique value shine through. So here's my website. You're looking at CamillaRay.com. I have my website hosted on Squarespace because I already had a Squarespace website because originally this website was just my blog website. Um, but I decided to make it kind of my everything website and again employers love love seeing this um, So first I have this about me section and it just says hi I'm Camilla a digital marketer brand strategist content creator and much more and I have brand strategist and digital marketer here um, I don't think I had brand strategist before because I wasn't a brand strategist yet, but I definitely had digital marketer, even though I was still just in school for digital marketing. But it's nice to just have a picture of you and a little blurb. This is my about me page, which I made my like homepage for when people first click the link to my website. And then I have a bit about my educational background. Um, and so this is where you can get into language that is a little less resume-y. On a resume, I would have this completely differently, but here I have, I love language, people, and learning. This polyamorous love affair led me to study linguistics at Boston University and digital marketing at Rutgers. So on my resume, I have to say like, I studied sociolinguistics at Boston University and specialized in blah, 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 blah. But on here, like it can be kind of whatever language you want it to be. And then I have a bit about my career. I won't read all of this, but you can go through it if you want. I just have a little bit of, about my career background. I have like why I'm interested in this career, what I'm currently doing, what I'm learning, and the skills I'm gaining through what I'm currently doing, and what I ultimately want from my career. And here I have a link to my actual portfolio, which we'll get to in a second. Then I have a blurb for creative projects. Uh, on here, I definitely wanted to find a way to incorporate my creative writing, my podcast, and my YouTube channel into my professional value. So I wanted to include these things and I just said I primarily do these things for enjoyment, but they always lead me to meeting cool people and developing skills directly ap applicable to my professional life. And it was really important that I put this here because if you don't show people how these things relate, it'll be hard for them to see or they'll decide how they relate or don't relate for themselves, but you wanna influence how they think these things relate. Um, because someone who isn't a YouTuber or doesn't have a podcast might not understand the project management skills that come from creating the, this content and so you kind of have to sh explain that to them. So I, I hinted at it here by saying like these things help me develop skills that are directly applicable to my professional life and they can go look at these projects here. And then I have the get in touch section. Again, here I was framing how I wanted people to think about these things. So if someone was only interested in seeing actual work, then I pointed them to my portfolio. But if they were interested in other projects I've done that aren't exactly what the role is, but have applicable skills, then they can look at my projects. So let's go to the portfolio page first. So here I have digital marketing projects and social media management. So for my digital marketing projects, these are really just projects that I did in school. Um, and so here I put marketing projects from class projects and professional experiences. At the time when I was making this, I didn't have many professional experiences to include or any, I don't think. But I put this here just so in the future I could add more. And I just have a class project that I did from school and I actually just embedded this PDF here from a marketing campaign that we had to do. Um, and another one from another class. 
and then they can also see social media management i've done like freelance social media management for family friends and stuff who own businesses and i also was a social media manager at my school and i did social media management for myself <laughs> for just my own social media and for my podcast and for my blog at one point so i included all of these things here and I said accounts I've managed, including graphic design, copywriting, video editing, and more. And so I have my podcast Instagram here. I have a family friend who I ran her Instagram for personal training. I have um, my school's Instagram that I helped with. And my old blog, Cam Says. Specifically at the time, I was looking for digital marketing roles. But this also helped me get my brand strategist role because it showed that I was able to think creatively and out of the box, but also strategically. And now clicking over to my project section, I just have this quote. Again, this isn't something that you can include on your resume, but it's something that helps who you are shine through and that you can include on something like a portfolio website. So I have this quote, art doesn't just lead us to create things, it leads us to create ourselves. And here's some things I do just for fun. And so I included, these are like old videos that are outdated and I need to replace them. But I included my YouTube channel, my podcast, and my creative writing blog. And I specifically have blurbs here that help people understand the work that goes into it and how the skills I developed through doing these things can apply to a professional role. So I won't go through all of these, but I'll go through the one for the podcast. So I talk about how the podcast got started and I say season one was a year long project that included brainstorming, branding, episode planning, outlining, recording, re-recording, editing, setting up a website, streaming accounts, and social media pages, promotions, scheduling, and more. It required us to wear many hats and taught us a ton about project management and the entire production process. It was really hard, really fun work, and we're currently working on season two. So here I made sure not only to share, hey, I do this cool thing, but also look at all these skills that I got from it. Brainstorming, branding, episode planning, outlining, actually recording, editing, setting up a website, all of this social media management, promotion, scheduling, so like all this time management. Even for my writing, and writing is good for any role, it really doesn't matter what you're doing, writing and public speaking can come in handy in any career field. And so if you're a writer on your own, you can definitely relate this to your role. Um, I'll read this full one just so you see how I let my backstory shine through and my personality and also how I connected it. And I just want you to be aware that you can do both. Like you can be a real person and also be qualified for a role. You don't have to be like a robot. Writing was my first creative outlet and one I always returned to. My sophomore year of high school, I wrote an essay titled A Letter to My First Love, New York City. After reading it, my English teacher took me under her wing and encouraged me to create a blog and continue writing. Since then, I've created a few blogs, some of which I foolishly, foolishly let drift into the digital abyss, continued to take literature and creative writing classes, and even published a short story. Now, my writing archives consist mostly of narrative essays, blog writing, journal entries, and short stories. Okay, pay extra attention to this part. Whether it's a movie, a self-help book, or a brand, people love stories that are honest, relevant, and good. This practice continues to teach me how to tell stories well, deliver value, and create with purpose. Now tell me what job that wouldn't relate to. Tell me what job you don't need to know how to tell stories well, deliver value, and create with purpose. And I also have buttons here so that they can go look at all of the rest of my articles if they want. They can look, go to all of my podcast episodes or visit my YouTube channel. Then I just have this contact page so that people can contact me if they want. I have my email, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Usually if they are going to my portfolio website, they probably already have that contact information, but it's there just in case. And that's really it for my portfolio website. I think this is a great tool that will come in handy for the rest of my life, no matter what my actual goal is when using it. I can always reframe things. But I really wanted to show how even if you only have a little bit of experience or even no experience in the role that you're going for, you can incorporate the other things that you do and actually consciously include them in the story of what your professional value is and who you are in the professional space 
And I want this to encourage you to continue to pursue any creative pursuits or hobbies that you have that are just for leisure because it is true that you build valuable skills through doing these that will apply some way in your professional life. So that's it for today's video. If you have a portfolio website that you think would serve as inspiration for anyone, then please drop it in the comments below. If you found value in this video, share it with your friends. And if you like this video, you might like this one here or here, I'm not sure. So I'll leave you to it and see you in another video.